Gregorio. <laughs> Hi, and welcome to this week's episode of The Lab, where we take your questions and turn them into experiments. I'm Greg. And I'm Mitch. And this week, we're talking about all different types of disgust. Do you find anything in particular disgusting? Right? When you're on the subway and people are like, ah, <laughs> and they sneeze in your face. And spiders. Oh, interesting you bring that up, because today, we're actually going to be forcing ourselves to interact with a tarantula, which we both find incredibly gross. We're gonna potentially be drinking our own pee, so, you know. Mm, and then after that, we're gonna make ourselves eat a bunch of concoctions that are pretty nasty. Oh! <laughs> Can you see it in there? It's okay, really I feel really bad because I like we actually like we need to open it for people to see, but like I'm so gross out. <gasps> oh my god! Ah! Oh my god! Is she gonna come out? Okay, so the actual look of disgust when you actually you know have your brows <laughs> furrowed, your lips raised, your uh, nose kind of clenched up is a universal symbol for disgust, and it's actually created throughout evolution so that we can warn other people that the thing that we are doing could potentially be harmful to ourselves, like, like a spider. If somebody vomits, it's a huge sign that they've not only, it's disgusting, first of all, and it's also a sign that something they've ingested is potentially poisonous or have made them ill so that out. you shouldn't be eating that because it's disgusting. Oh my god! How do we get her? Oh my god. Okay, oh, Greg. No, don't oh, bring her closer to us. What do we do though? I don't want to touch it after. Oh my god. Oh, ew, oh. ew! I don't know if I can do this. <gasps> Oh my god, it has the biggest fangs! Oh. Like it's coming to you. I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do. I actually like, don't know what to do right now. Should we just scoop her back in? I don't know, but how, who's gonna touch her when she gets out? Obviously when interacting with the tarantula we feel disgust. I feel very not hungry right now. But also we feel fear, and it's really interesting because both disgust and fear are core emotions that are built within us to protect us from potential dangers. Oh, she's oh just looking god. at us now. So. If, if I like, bum. if I were to touch, but she might walk this way. <laughs> which way? Wh <laughs> I don't know if I can touch her. Touch her, she's going to you. Oh, this spider is an example of sensory disgust. When you think of insects or mice or all different sorts of things that kind of gross us out, it's often because they could be carriers of disease. Something like a cockroach isn't necessarily dangerous for you, but it could indicate that your home or the space you're living in is actually unclean. And so we've had this evolutionary reaction to find them disgusting to protect our own selves. If you sneeze on yourself or if your best friend sneezes on you, it's not nearly as bad as if a stranger sneezes on mm -hmm. you on the subway. And it's kind of like this. I don't see tarantulas often. Yep. I have no experience with them. fear of the unknown, too. Exactly. Right? We don't know this spider. If we knew her personally, maybe we'd be a little less scared. Her I'm because... so sorry, Susan Sarandon. Her name's Molly. I think we should call her <laughs> Susan Sarandon. Oh, oh! She's lifting it. She's strong. <sighs> That's disgusting. So we wanted to test some things that we perceive as disgusting, like a toilet and a urinal, and then put them side by side with the things we use on a regular basis, like our phones and the keyboards on our laptops, to see which is actually more disgusting. We then took the swab samples from each location to an agar petri dish and let the cultures grow. Then we left them in a warm, bright place, and here are the results. So the cleanest and least bacteria grown was in the toilet, which is kind of interesting because that's, that's so where surprising. people do. <laughs> <laughs> the urinal and the phone were about the same, and the most disgusting place was the keyboard. That's all kind of surprising considering these two things are the things we touch every single day basically and they're the most disgusting. Now it's time to drink our own pee. And so to do that, we have to now go pee. Pee! You're back. <laughs> Oh my god! Like so it's pretty disgusting to drink your own pee like this. And what we are gonna test is we're actually gonna be filtering our pee using this lifesaver filter and see if after filtering it and knowing that all we're really drinking is water and salt, are we still gonna be grossed out by the fact that we have poured our pee into this right. device? Cause, cause What's really interesting about this is it relates to something called interpersonal disgust, which is that I'm gonna find it much easier to drink my own pee, <laughs> even though it's being cleaned equally as yours than yours. I do not want to drink. Yeah, your yeah, pee. I think that's na way nastier. I mean, like, I don't really want to drink my pee, but I don't want to drink yours even more. 
Ew, I mean, it smells like cardboard. <laughs> I like the smell of my own farts. Like, I can wipe my own butt, but as soon as it's, like, yeah, someone, someone else's, else like, dirty disgusting. white butt, I'm like, ew. And it's all because, like, we need to be able to look after ourselves. Yeah, so we have to clean ourselves. Yeah. So disgust is really fascinating. And Don't I'm just going to go yeah, heavy. you got to do it fast. Otherwise, you're going to spill out. Oh, why is that so disgusting? Like, that is the thought of, ew, right? It smells like bran flakes. Pull another, I just went, <laughs> Like, I'd be so pissed. Oh! <laughs> oh! It's like a it's not shot of fully piss. clear, but it is much more clear. Okay. Now I don't know what moisture on my hands is pee and what isn't pee. Ew. I think this is your pee. It does look clear when you first start. Wait, yours is clear. No, but I think it's because yours is completely clear. Yeah, it's already looking more yellow to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, 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 okay. I'm like gross. I'm not, we're out. not like. I'm just having like a sip. <laughs> okay. Cheers. Oh, oh, ew, ew, that actually, ew, that's not, <laughs> that tastes disgusting. I'm kind of like, does it taste like my cereal? Well, it's pee, so we're like very aware, but if someone had said like, oh, this is like essence of cucumber water, I might be like, oh, that's oh, like, yeah, you're right. like, like kind of oh. gross tasting, like I wouldn't choose it, but it's not like revolting, which that sip tasted revolting to me, so it's definitely a lot in our heads. A lot of the times, disgust can also be correlated with food. So today, we're gonna start by eating the three meals of the day, starting with breakfast. There's nothing quite like a yummy bowl of cereal with some wholesome milk to go along with it and your lovely OJ. Why is this disgusting? Oh! <laughs> oh my god, can you see this? It looks like Egg. We love when things are pure. So we want, you know, organic kale juice. We even would want to drink orange juice when it's pure, but as soon as you mix it with milk, all of a sudden it becomes disgusting. Little tiny chunks. Oh, oh, oh. That's <laughs> actually nasty. It's like really gross. So for lunch, I love a hot dog. And on my hot dog, I enjoy some mustard and ketchup. And with my hot dog, I love a glass of nice mm, cola. It's fresh. So what happens if you eliminate the hot dog and with this cola, we decide to add some condiments like <laughs> mustard <laughs> and, and ketchup. ketchup. Oh, I was hoping you wouldn't know. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Ew. That's so weird, especially That's because, so weird. because like the mustard and ketchup are in clumps. So you kind of get some coke and then you get like clump here and a clump here. Last but not least, you want a delicious dinner. Here we have some broccoli, some rice, some turkey. But what happens if we blend it all up? Should I just put this all in? <laughs> yeah, do it. I'm hungry. <laughs> yeah! Oh, no, it's like the meat is like so rubbery. Oh my god, the whole table's shaking. Ew. <laughs> Ew. It does smell like dinner. Ew. It smells like <laughs> fart. It smells like a it legitimate smell like fart. fart. <laughs> I don't like the noise either. It's like. Yeah, you know what that sounds like. <laughs> Oops. Fat. Fat. Fatty fat. Okay. okay. Cheers. Ew. Ew. I mean, Ugh. It's, it tastes strangely buttery. <laughs> and some people are so scared to have this happen, to even have food touching on their plate, let alone mixed all together. It's kind of weird that the word disgust is used for what we did today, but also in a lot of other contexts, right? Like when we're disgusted at certain people or certain acts. Yeah, like moral disgust. And I think it's interesting because this is sort of a metaphor for purity. Like we like things to be pure. You know, mm -hmm. we will eat uh, all of these things on their own, but as soon as you mix them up, they're gross. And it's sort of like there's other forms of moral disgust. For example, fairness. People get disgusted, and I am disgusted when you think about really rich, affluent, excessive wealth that exists, and then maybe they take advantage of people who are impoverished or who need more. To me, that is disgusting, and mm -hmm. it's weird that it's the same emotion I feel when I eat like blended food. Is it the same emotion we're feeling for the food 
or is it two different emotions that we just use the same word for? Yeah, and it's interesting. We were talking earlier about the fear of the unknown and the disgust of the unknown. We found that tarantula so disgusting because we haven't been around tarantulas mm -hmm. a lot, and we're taught that they are disgusting. And it's interesting because when you think about homosexuality, it's in places where it's not accepted or maybe it's more unknown that people think it's a disgusting act. And so ignorance is actually very dangerous in those settings. So you can make a correlation there that if you know if you if society changes and homosexuality is accepted and there's more exposure to it, like hashtag modern family came out, <laughs> then people start to be like, oh, this isn't disgusting disgusting and you can like progress in that way. So it's like a weird interesting correlation between the biology of looking at a tarantula and what we feel and then the actual moral disgust that some people have towards something like homosexuality. On a lighter note, surveys have shown that the most disgusting word in the English language is moist. moist. And now it's time for This, this week, week in Science, Science Talk. Talk. This week, diamond particles are being considered to redirect the sun's energy and fight climate change. It's a desperate but feasible geoengineering strategy that involves throwing diamonds in the sky. Scientists are using ultrasonic speakers to levitate objects in three dimensions with more control than ever before. So you can probably say goodbye to those weird segues from 2015 and hello to the hoverboards of the future. And finally, if you're a teacher or student in Canada and want Mitch and I to maybe come film a video with you at your school or win a bunch of other different Samsung prizes, we have a challenge for you. Go to solvefortomorrow.ca to find out all the details of how you can join this amazing experience. That's our update for the week. You can follow us on Instagram and Twitter with our handles here. We love hearing all the news and updates and science information that you've given us this week. Be sure to subscribe for more science and we'll see you next Sunday for another episode of The Lab. Peace.